To a lot of people, myself included, there are very few feelings quite as wonderful as resonating with the lyrics of the music you're listening to. Experiences like these can make us feel like we're not alone, or that we aren't strange for feeling the way we do about certain things. They may even go as far as making us understand our own emotions better, by expressing emotionally weighted concepts through concise and catchy lyrics in a song. It's not uncommon for people to stumble upon songs or albums and walk away feeling like they've discovered something that they can connect with on a deep level. We may even go back to them, to be reminded of a time where we felt this connection. For me and countless others, Car Seat Headrest's Twin Fantasy is one of those albums. This is an album that explores the experience of young love in an incredibly intimate and idiosyncratic nature, almost to the point where it feels like reading excerpts from a journal or love letters. There's really a sense that we're peering into the brain and the heart of the then 19 year old Will Toledo, the original album's sole writer and producer. He began writing the 2011 album after feelings of anxiety and isolation led him to transferring from Virginia Commonwealth University to the College of William and Mary. In this new environment, Will, like many nervous young men, managed to find comfort in a relationship. Twin Fantasy attempted to paint an auditory picture of his changing mental state as the relationship progressed, and in doing so hits a lot of notes that will strike a chord with anybody who, perhaps foolishly looking back, thought they'd met the love of their life at a very young age, and then slowly watch this fantasy break down in front of them. The concept of a twin fantasy to me is the desire to see yourself in someone completely. To be so alike that the two of you essentially become one, and are happy to live the rest of your lives together. Another very special thing about this album was it was actually recorded twice. A fully produced and higher fidelity counterpart to the original record was released in 2018, face to face, with the original now being given the subtitle Mirror to Mirror. Will had mentioned in interviews about how he felt the book was never truly closed on the original, and how it was destined for a new take. The new take we received also differs in many ways aside from production. The lyrics were updated to be more retrospective, less emotionally fluctuating, and give a clearer picture of how this fantasy changed in his mind over time. This is the version of the album we're going to be covering in this deep dive video, because though the original is the favourite of a lot of Car Seat Headrest fans, this is what introduced me to the band, and it holds a very special place in my heart. I'm going to preface the main part of the video just by saying that any analyses of lyrics here are just what I'm picking up from it, and uh, you may disagree, and in that case, I fully encourage you to put your own takes and opinions in the comments. I love reading about analyses of lyrics, especially, you know, if I disagree with them, you know. It's always nice to see what different people can take away from different things. I think that's been a long enough intro. We'll get started with the first track I'd like to cover, Beach Life and Death. In the beginning of this song, Will sings about a lone road trip he spent daydreaming about his lover. He drives down to Harper's Ferry train station and throws rocks into the river, speaking as though she were there with him. We can tell there's something bugging our narrator here, as he timidly describes his desires to put his arms around the train as it pulls into the small station. It's used as a metaphor for his yearning to embrace something that he can hold on to. But it's not after long that he's snapped out of it by the train's conductor giving him funny looks. He lets this embarrassment get the best of him as he heads home, lamenting. Toledo knows what he should be doing, where he should be going. He knows these mundane answers are the things that are expected of him. But he wants to break out of this. He wants something more in his life. After a short instrumental break that introduces some fun and jangly guitar melodies, we head to a verse where our narrator laments over previous songs he'd written about unrequited love, not wanting history to repeat itself. This is followed by what's probably the most infamous lyrical passage of the song. Toledo lies about being drunk as a defence mechanism to his friends' reactions of him coming out the closet. He wants to tell them, but he's scared they won't accept him, so he feels he needs some way to be able to play it off if it all goes wrong, though it seems his friends are more interested in his newfound obsession with cartoon dogs, to which he sings...
I love this part. It's one of those in-jokes on this record that make it so personal. The partner he sings about over the course of Twin Fantasy is Kate Wirtz, a rather popular furry comic artist. Will fell in love with her art as he fell in love with her. He's not upset that his friends are questioning his interests. He's getting defensive because they're questioning ones that he picked up from his partner. As the song's dynamics build and the riffs get louder, Will goes on to talk about how he's feeling in day-to-day -day life. How he's feeling numb and soulless. The vocals from here on in begin to get more and more frantic as he expresses that he feels like he's fallen for someone that he has no business being with. We hear a lot about Toledo's life being tedious and tied down, and here he describes his partner as being quite the opposite. The lines here about cutting the scene are talking about how he wishes to just switch lives with this person. He wants to be them, or at the very least, be with them. We reach a climax with this desperate call out for help. I don't want to go Will is that scared of his own feelings that he thinks they will drive him insane. A short but energetic guitar solo is played before the song shifts into the next part, opening with a sharply strummed riff with these oh 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 vocals that just make it sound like the song's gotten stuck in limbo, but in a good way. It feels like we're taking a breather from all that tension that was just building. Lines revealing our narrator's overprotective nature and his anxieties about where he and his partner truly stand with each other are softly sung in this next part. It's been a since we first met I don't know if we're boyfriends yet. Do you have I see these lines here as Will trying his best to relate with his partner. He's trying to fit in with that rebellious lifestyle, but he's stuttering over his words and he seems to be reaching for something to bond over. The hook of this section presents the idea that the two of them are trying to break away from normalcy and become outsiders all the while desiring what humans crave the most, love. But shortly following this, we snap back to... More groceries get eaten, get more groceries get eaten. No matter how much Will tries to be an outsider, he's doomed to his daily cycle. After some lyrics referencing Frank Ocean and Kate's comic works, we hear the lines... I love the second half of this verse. He's expressing his desires to be welcomed into his partner's life through someone else. It all ties back into that twin fantasy concept. An other is supposed to signify one part of a whole, with the self being the other half. He wants to make this person, as well as himself, feel whole, but he's scared that isn't his place. We now get onto the third part of the song, which continues the opening's explosive energy and garried riffs. We're also back to the themes of rebellion. Will speaks of not caring about warning signs and the dangers of sexual relationships in formative years. He just wants to be young and have fun like everybody else around him is doing. Going on to talk about Walt Disney movies and their depictions of meant-to-be romance and how we find out through life that this isn't how things work. The outro of the song features the lines repeated over strumming riffs and drum fills of increasing volume and intensity. Will explained in a Tumblr post what these lyrics meant to him. He said they signified the emotions of failing to keep your feelings for someone dead and buried, and how they always come back to get you, even when you think they're completely gone. The next song I'd like to talk about is the album's fourth track, and one of my favourite songs of all time, Sober to Death. I really love the picking pattern in this song. I think the warm buzzing of the 12 string sounds so comforting against these moody sounding chords, a tomba befitting of the song's subject. Lyrically, the song opens up with a reference to an Alfred Hitchcock film, cleverly tied into a plea to end their long-distance relationship 
and we soon learn why the two aren't staying together. Will's partner suffers from anger issues, and here they're introduced as if they're a creature stalking the pair of them, keeping out of sight, but always making their presence known. Nothing works for everyone Good stories are bad lies Not only is this a wonderfully catchy bridge, it's also important to the narrative. Here we see the first cracks beginning to show. Will is trying to cope with his lover's anger issues. He tells himself, not every relationship is perfect. Nothing works for everyone. Good stories are bad lives. Toledo is telling himself the drama and the stress is only a symptom of something great. He's hooked to the troubled relationship in the same way that most people get hooked to sensationalised love stories. We're then led to this song's wonderfully haunting chorus. Here Will is vowing to help his partner through anything, even if it hurts him. He thinks if he can share in their suffering, maybe it won't hurt so bad. We were wrecked before we crashed into each other implies that though the two of them may feel broken, if they stay together, they could somehow form a whole. In the second verse, Will continues to console his partner. He admits he wants to be there when she has episodes. Yet despite the help he gives, the screaming just continues. The vocalised ah-ahs build to a short guitar melody before the chorus cuts through again. At the end of this chorus, we're treated to a huge sounding guitar solo. It's used to raise the volume and tension and bring the song to a head before it suddenly drops out and we head to what is actually my favourite part of the song, the outro. Lyrically, all we get is a repetition of the phrase. Don't worry, you and me won't be alone no more. But beneath this we hear jaunting transitions between acoustic and distorted guitar arpeggios and chords drums that are switching around just as frantically and the lyrical repetitions really build a sense that Will is trying to stay calm as all this chaos happens around him and it really does create a rather anxious moment in the song but over time the drums slow to a steady beat and the guitars become more and more consistent and predictable Will lowers his dramatic tone and a sense of hope appears within his words The final song I'm going to cover in this first part is the album's uplifting pop anthem, Bodies. As the song starts, we're greeted with an upbeat poppy drum machine groove, and before long, we hear that simple, danceable riff slide into the beat. In the first verse, we can hear Toledo being his usual awkward self. He knows he can't rely on his mouth to say the words he really wants to. This song covers the struggle of opening up and the feeling of freedom you get when you're with someone you love. Singing is used as a metaphor here to convey these struggles. He begins reflecting on his partner's reluctance to express her feelings as he tries to get her to feel more comfortable and reassures her that singing is something everyone can do. The pre-chorus paints a picture of a good night at a club inhibitions of embarrassment for everyone around them are out the window. And with the chorus, Toledo finds the will to open up as well, albeit tripping over his words while he sings to his partner. I think this song is a really great take on that live fast, die young mindset, because it couples it with the idea that maybe the reason why all these young people are doing such reckless things is that they know they're en route to slowly be falling apart, or that those they surround themselves with won't be around for as long as they want. I think there's a definite feeling here that Will knows these nights are numbered, and his paranoid mind can't help but thinking about it while he's supposed to be having a good time and seizing the moment while it's happening. At the song's climax, we hear this juxtaposition between the lines. <laughs> And this loud chanted chorus seems to personify the song's main idea pretty fittingly. I can drown out these anxieties if I just sing a little louder and dance like nothing's happening. That concludes the first part of this deep dive into Twin Fantasy. The second part will cover the songs on the latter half of the record. There we see the darker songs of the project. 
as the narrative continues to reveal all that goes wrong with Will's teenage dream. So stay tuned for that one, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and most importantly, thank you for watching.